What's up everybody, welcome to Rampage Design Group. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for us so we can keep making great content for you. We're starting off episode two of our black walnut build by joining these two slabs together. So we're marking the slabs for where we're gonna put in two biscuits. We're using the biscuit joiner, we're gonna hit it on each end of the slab and then put a biscuit in when we glue the slabs together. The reason we're putting biscuits on this is to make sure it lines up perfectly. Honestly, I think if we were doing this all the time, we would buy a domino joiner, but we do not have one. So this is what we're gonna use. Because of the way we had to cut these slabs, there's a little bit of a straight line on one of the slabs that you'll be able to see. So I'm feathering it with the sander just to make kind of a fake live edge. You'll never notice that it was faked because the black epoxy is gonna cover most of it. But we're trying to feather it in, make some bumps so that it looks like a natural live edge tree. Once we get that all done, we're just pushing the two live edge slabs together, making sure we're completely happy with the seam that's gonna be glued together. We want that as tight as possible. So we had a little bit of finessing to do, but we got it just how we wanted it. Once we finished that, we brought the slabs into our clean room and we are going to start injecting epoxy into the cracks of the, of the live edge. For this process, we are using a syringe with a cup of epoxy and just injecting the epoxy into the crack. It'll seep down and for about 15, 20 minutes, I keep coming through and keep filling it and eventually it will stop filling up. Sometimes you do have to come back for two or three coats of this after it dries because it'll sink in. There is a couple ways to do this so it doesn't happen. You could do a caulk seam around it and then fill it all the way up and it'll naturally push the epoxy in. I think we're going to start doing that in the future, but with this one we just injected it in. As you'll see Dave in the right corner here, he is actually brushing epoxy on the live edge. This is so that way it'll fill in any gaps and cracks and it'll help strengthen the live edge and maximize adhesion when we pour the full epoxy river. I'm gonna come back through once, that once the epoxy is dry on the live edge and I'm gonna sand it down. That is also to promote adhesion for the new epoxy to stick to the live edge. So we're gonna be gluing this live edge table up on our steel table with a piece of plywood on it. So just to make sure it doesn't stick to the plywood, I put some Tyvek tape on so that the wood glue does not stick to the table. Before we actually glue this table together, we're gonna to pre-clamp it, make sure all the seams are exactly perfect on how we want them. And then we're gonna unclamp it, glue them, and then we'll do a final clamp together. So Dave here is using a paintbrush and we're using Gorilla Wood Glue. He's gonna paint wood glue on each side and then I'm gonna put a biscuit joint in on each side and we're gonna clamp the live edge together. When we clamp this together, you will see some wood glue rise through the seam. That's actually preferred and that's what we want. That means that it is squeezing so tight that the wood glue is squeezing out. Doesn't matter that it's leaking over because that will all be CNC'd off. So once we clamp the live edge tight, then we're actually gonna clamp it down to our table as well. We do this because when you, we glue it together, sometimes the tables will have a tendency to cup upward. We don't want that, so we're doing a couple different cross members and clamping it to the steel table to make sure it stays flat. So we debated how we were gonna do this table with the epoxy. We were debating about doing a couple different ideas and forms for the epoxy river because it's just in the center of the table and it doesn't actually go all the way to the ends since the ends are glued together. Me and Dave came up with a solution. We actually put Tyvek tape on our table, on our work table, and then we're siliconing the live edge table to the work table. So as you'll see, I'll use silicone and I'm actually gonna do two beads next to each other. I just wanna come back with that second bead just in case the epoxy were to leak past the first bead. It really shouldn't, but rather be safe than sorry. So once I glue that, I'm gonna set the live edge back onto the table and then I'm gonna clamp it down. You'll see for this, I'll actually use five different bars and those are all clamped down just to make sure this table is rock solid and it doesn't move or flex at all. For this project, we are using Pro Marine Supplies Pro Pour Epoxy. We've had great success with this. We're not sponsored by them. We pay full price from their website, but this has been the epoxy that we've used for a long time and it, is, it has produced great results. If you guys have an epoxy that you prefer, leave it in the comments. We'd be interested to try some new stuff, but we have no complaints with this. 
So we're using this deep pour epoxy or pro pour epoxy with a black dye and it'll give the river a nice jet black look. One thing we really make sure we mix it well, we like to use a drill with a paddle mixing bit. I know a lot of people do mix it by hand as well, but you can't over mix this stuff. And if you under mix it, you could lose a lot of money fast with how much this epoxy costs. So for this table, we used about a gallon and a half of epoxy. As you'll see here, we fill it up once and then we were actually still a little bit low, so we mixed a little bit more and filled it the rest of the way. And then as this is drying over the next several hours, you'll see little bubbles and stuff. We'll come back with a propane torch and just lightly go over the river and it'll pop the bubbles. And if sometimes the epoxy projects during when it really starts to harden, you'll see little holes form. It's not the end of the world. You can come back through with more epoxy and inject it in once it's completely dry and cured. And then from here, we're gonna wait about seven days, about a week, to really make sure this is cured fully. Promarine Supplies recommends about 72 hours, I believe. But we like to really give it adequate time and make sure it's nice and solid before we move on to step two of replaning the table and then sanding it. Thank you everybody for watching part two of this build. Part three is coming up soon. Please like, comment, and subscribe.